Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're looking at some additional issues that I've seen brought up in various comments, replies, and requests, but which I haven't already done videos on. Last time, we talked about whether our virtues are worth anything in heaven, and this time, a topic I saw raised by someone online, whether risk is needed for thrills. This person was raising issue with the whole idea of heaven by arguing that certain things about it sound good at first, but ultimately wouldn't make people happy. They said that some of life's most thrilling experiences involve risk, such as, for example, skiing or parachuting. Therefore, without the risk of failure, the thrill would be reduced as well. Well, firstly, this is hardly an original idea. Writer Charles Beaumont, who worked on The Twilight Zone, came up with a similar premise in 1960 for his episode A Nice Place to Visit, in which a robber dies and finds himself in a world where his every wish is quickly granted. Upon discovering that he's still not happy without the risk of failure, he's then informed that, in fact, he's not in heaven at all. It can certainly be true that the risk of failure is responsible for many thrills, and therefore removing it entirely would be an extremely short-sighted way to design an eternal paradise. But my answer to such objections is the same as Charles Beaumont's answer. Any place designed that way wouldn't be heaven after all. So let's propose instead a heaven where failure, and therefore risk and competition, is possible, as I've done in the past. Nothing about this concept requires people to suffer or things to go badly for anyone. At the very least, it's not an explicit requirement, so the chance for failure seems to be compatible with the existence of heaven. There is, however, a kind of failure that would be impossible in any faithful understanding of heaven. Death. However, the reality is that most people who engage in dangerous, risky athletic events don't do so with the intention of almost dying. Skiing, for example, or race car driving are activities that provide some thrills because of the chance of failure, but it's mostly the rush of wind and adrenaline and the experience of moving so quickly that make them thrilling. Much of this experience can be preserved without even moving at all through movies, video games, and fans, and we know that those in heaven can move much faster than people here on earth can. We can also show that the risk of death isn't necessary for thrills by using parachuting as an example, since people who parachute could potentially die if their chute fails. Suppose that I were to ask a person about to parachute if he was about to have a thrill. He'd probably answer with something like a yes. Next, I offer him a choice between two parachutes, one that's been carefully inspected for safety using methods that comply with all regulatory guidelines. The other one has also been inspected for safety, but for 10% less time than recommended. Now, which of these parachutes would he derive more thrill from using? The answer is the first, because there is absolutely no chance that he would willingly pick the second if the first one was available at the same price. Now, if danger were an essential ingredient in the thrill of parachuting, such that removing it would also remove the thrill, you'd expect parachuters to be deliberately choosing parachutes that are less safe, so as to increase their thrill. Instead, they don't. Why? Because although the thrilling act may also be dangerous, it's not the danger itself that is responsible for the thrill. So, it seems that serious risks aren't needed for thrills after all, and therefore heaven doesn't lose anything of value by removing those. Next, is thirst needed to enjoy a drink? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.